Today, we're rapidly approaching the end of September 2022. I mention that because I just started teaching three classes for Fuller Theological Seminary, two classes on the parables and one an introduction to the New Testament. More about those in a bit, but I've got to show you two new additions I have for the office. A new bookcase, but this might require the bike going somewhere else. And this really cool dictionary stand. Which I think I'll put right about back there. But I digress. The main point why I mentioned teaching the classes is I wanted to tell you a little bit about the books I require my students to purchase and read for certain classes. And I strongly recommend these for other people as well. What I'd like to do today is show you the books that I require my students to purchase when we do a New Testament survey class. The reason for that and the reason why I recommend these is because I think these make a great starting point for anyone who wants to study the New Testament a lot deeper. They are also great gifts to give someone who's going to seminary or Bible college that might be in your life or perhaps someone who's in ministry. But don't relegate these to clergy or to students. These are excellent books for anyone to read. These are the ones that I've found my students like best over the past 30 years, and they've given them high marks on the course evaluations. They're also books that I think are very, very well written as well. And I'm going to have the full list of these books and links to them underneath this video so that you can buy them if you'd like to. So let's see where to start. Let's start with a type of book that is called a New Testament introduction. As I said, this is a type of book. These are really designed to give someone an introduction or a survey to most of the main issues, content, and backgrounds of the New Testament. For example, where was Matthew written? When was it written? What were the challenges that Matthew was addressing when he wrote to those churches? A good New Testament or Old Testament introduction, for that matter, should explain to you the historical and cultural context of the various books. They should give you a survey of the content of each book and what some of the main theological issues and topics of that book are, and how these texts became part of the New Testament or Old Testament or Biblical canon. I've used The Anatomy of the New Testament by Speedy, Smith, and Black and The New Testament and Antiquity by Burge, Kohick, and Green in various classes. And I would say that these two are excellent introductions for most readers, and they're really aimed at sort of a college level reader. The New Testament and Antiquity is a little bit more conservative than the Anatomy and the New Testament, if that's a deciding factor to you. And both of these volumes are loaded with all kinds of maps, graphs, and photographs to really give you a picture of the New Testament and its historical context. The text I use most often is an introduction to the New Testament by David De Silva. One of the big advantages to this book is that if you don't read it, it makes a wonderful doorstop. It's big. What I really appreciate about this book, alongside the usual questions of who wrote it, dates, who it's being written to, or the audience, and the content of each book, is that he asks questions about how we should read and interpret various parts of those books. So for example, in his chapter on 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he's got this grayed out section on exegetical skills or how we should interpret a letter. At the end of each chapter, he will also have a section where he discusses the relationship of this letter towards ministry formation or issues today. So this makes a valuable resource for anybody who wants to learn something about the New Testament 
who's interested in interpreting it, or who is involved in ministry. Well worth the money, but it is definitely a doorstop. Let's put these off to the side over here. Another book I highly recommend is A Theology of the New Testament by George Eldon Lyde. This book is not a New Testament introduction, nor is it a book that looks at theological questions, say the nature of salvation, or perhaps J.I. Packer's famous book, Knowing God. Rather, this stands in the middle between these two categories, between studying the New Testament and theology. It's focused on the theological ideas and contributions of each book in the New Testament. So what is John's particular theological contribution as opposed to Matthew or Luke's? George Ladd was one of the formative professors at Fuller Theological Seminary. So it's only fitting that I bring this into my classes because I teach there. It was originally published in 1974. You want to get the revised edition that was done by Donald Hagner in the 1990s. He really brings it up to date and expands Ladd's work. To give you an idea of the content of this book, when he's discussing the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he dives into a section on the mysteries of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the ethics of the kingdom. For example, on his discussion of the topics of the Son of Man, the Messiah, or the Son of God, he has almost 40 pages devoted to those ideas. What I love about this book is that it examines the theological contributions of each author in each book in the New Testament, but does so in a way that doesn't alienate or attack positions held by other New Testament scholars. Okay, moving on, because we don't have much time here. So we've got New Testament introductions, a theology of the New Testament. The next topic I want to hit are background studies. Think of these as historical and cultural studies that will help you understand the world in which Jesus and the apostles lived and ministered. The 800-pound grill in the room here is Backgrounds of Early Christianity by Everett Ferguson. This is really the classic in this area here. The third edition is definitely the most up-to-date, and it's more expanded than the first two editions. But if you see editions one or two, perhaps in a used bookstore or online somewhere for a good price, they are well worth having. I would not turn up my nose to those either, especially if they save you a few bucks. Ferguson breaks down the historical and political and religious backgrounds behind the New Testament into several areas. The first is the political and religious history starting from around 400 BC to about 100 AD. Then he moves into Greek and Roman philosophical thought from Plato and Aristotle up to the Cynics. He then turns and examines the Jewish place within the Greco-Roman world. And the final section examines Christianity in the ancient world, especially references from non-Christian authors about the church. This book, like the others, has a wealth of information. And while it may look intimidating, it's not the sort of book that you pick up and you read from cover to cover. Rather, you're going to pick it up and read, say, five pages on who Josephus was and understand just that particular area. Think of it as sort of an encyclopedia rather than sort of a mystery or a novel that you would read. Similar to that is this book, The World of the New Testament, edited by Joel Green and Lee McDonald. It's very similar to Ferguson's book, but it's more up to date. And it's written by numerous authors who are particular specialists in that area. It even includes a chapter by Ferguson on Herod's dynasty. I go back and forth in my classes between which of these books to recommend to my students. The slight advantage that the world of the New Testament has over backgrounds of Christianity is that its table of contents is organized just a little bit better, making it easier to find the particular topic that you're interested in. Ferguson's, though, reads easier, in my opinion, but that could be because it's been revised three times and all those editorial revisions usually help with a book's readability. I'm going to include another book, Warren Carter's book, The Seven Events That Shaped the New Testament World, in this category. Unfortunately, I can't locate it down here in my catacombs. It's around here somewhere, and I'll most likely find it once this video is up on YouTube. Such is life. Warren Carter's book, The Seven Events, is much shorter than either of these two books, and it is a quick read as well. The seven events that he looks at are Alexander the Great, the translation of the Old Testament into Greek, the Septuagint, 
Herod rebuilding the temple, Roman control of Palestine, Jesus' crucifixion, the apostles writing the New Testament, and the formation of the New Testament canon. Now, Warren Carter is not as conservative as these other two books. And the one issue I have with his book is that all too often he presents only one side of an issue. For example, he only considers a late date for authorship of the New Testament books, especially the Gospels. And he doesn't present evidence for possibly an earlier date. Having said that, if you go into Carter's book knowing that he's more critical of some of these issues, he really gives an excellent foundation for understanding a lot of the main historical trajectories behind the New Testament. This brings me to my final category, specialized studies. Now, there are really a ton of books out there that address very specific historical or cultural aspects of the New Testament, but I think there are two that really stand out and I recommend or require them in my classes. The first one is Wayne Meeks, The First Urban Christians. Meeks' book does not look at the entire New Testament, but primarily the letters from Paul. It was first published in 1983 and then revised 20 years later. It is one of the first books that examined the social fabric into which Paul's letters were written, or we would say it takes a sociological approach to understanding Paul's letters. What was it like to live in one of the cities that Paul planted his churches in? What type of tensions did the early believers face with their fellow city dwellers? How was the church similar or different from other social organizations in those cities? Let's say clubs, guilds, or perhaps synagogues. A Woman's Place, House Churches and Earliest Christianity by Carolyn Osick and Margaret MacDonald picks up on the trajectory that Meek's book launched. However, now the focus is on the social aspect and space women occupied in the Greco-Roman world. In particular, they look at the lives of female children, wives, mothers, and widows, and how these different roles that women inhabited through their life fit within the life of the early church. It also examines social roles and influence or lack of influence that women may have held within the church during that time. For example, patrons and how they provide for the churches within their house and the influence they may have had over the church, down to female slaves who the early Greeks said were twice cursed because A, they were women, and second, because they were slaves. A horrible position to have lived in during that time. This book helps us to understand just how different their lives and world was during that time from it is today. And also for us to see the unappreciated contributions to the formation, function, and their ministry within the early church as women. As I mentioned at the start, I will have links to where you can pick these books up under the video if you're so inclined. These are the ones that I've used in my classes over the years. There are strengths and weaknesses to all of these books, and I would suggest reading a review or two online if you're thinking about buying one. If you do end up getting one of these books, I would appreciate hearing from you what you think of it in the comment section underneath the video here. And if you like this type of video, let me know. I may have to do others like it.